Hey guys, it's Jodie Flagel here from Jodie Flagel Art. Today I'm going to be doing something kind of slightly different to my usual, um, <clears throat> and that is I have this lovely old wardrobe here. Um, and it's like it's an old charm style, so it's it's a really good brand, although unfortunately I can't find the insignia on it. But this suggests it's old charm, it's really well made, um, and I kind of love it as is really. I think so I'm planning to do something fairly, I'm going to say it's fairly minimal, but it doesn't mean it's any less effort. Um, but I'm thinking today I'm going to give it like a rustic farmhouse look, um, kind of keep to its natural, natural look, you know, because it's so pretty as it is. So stay tuned for that and we'll just, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> very first thing I'm going to use today is my Festool sander, um, 120 grit sandpaper and it's got this cool little dust extraction thing there. Um, so this is what I mean, it's not going to be like, like super easy, it's still going to be a lot of work, um, but I'm just going to get to sanding it now. I've already cleaned it by the way guys, always clean first. Because if you don't clean first, then the oils that are on the um, on the furniture can then be kind of sanded more further into the wood and cause, and if you would like to do any painting afterwards, it could cause issues. So just always get that like dirt and grime off first. Alright guys, this is what we got going on. It's not like perfectly sanded, like it's still kind of a little bit rustic. Um, and then by that I mean I haven't got, got into every nook and cranny. Um, there's still tiny bits of varnish left over but that's fine because what I'm going to do now is a dark paint wash. By that I mean I'm going to mix some paint with some water, make it really watery, splash it on, splash it on there. <laughs> not brush it on there um, and then wipe it off with a rag just to make it look more rustic and darker and moodier and older um, but yeah I kind of I'm I much prefer raw wood over varnished wood any day I like painted furniture I like raw wood furniture but I'm not a fan of varnish at all here I have some onyx in uh, the terra clay paint range get it open Okay, so it's this black colour here. I'm going to pour a little bit into this Tupperware here. Probably, it really doesn't need to be this big, but this is all I could find. There we go, so I've just uh, put that much paint in there. I'm then going to pour some water in there. Plenty of it. And then... And then I just have this really old brush and I'm just going to mix it all together with this. I'll try and show you a little bit better. I just dropped it in there. Oh no. Why do these things always happen to me? So, obviously the, water, the more you water the paint down, um, the thinner the paint's going to be. I know that's a really obvious thing to say. <laughs> um, but the less coverage you'll get. So I'm actually gonna water it down just a tiny bit more just a tiny tiny bit more did it again look never learn from my mistakes so it's kind of this watery now you're gonna have to keep mixing it um, as you go along because what the paint will want to do is it'll want to settle on the bottom and separate from the water so you've just got to keep making sure that you mix it together and also I've got a rag to hand as well got my very wet paintbrush and I'm literally, I'm going to work in sections, I'm going to put a little bit on like this, yes it will drip and it will be messy, okay, and then I'm going to get my rag and literally just wipe it like that. As I say, it's going to be very, very rustic, so... 
it's going to look kind of crazy for a while. It's not going to look as pretty as what it is now, but it is going to look a lot more dramatic and a lot older. You can keep some spare water on side if you need to, if you just need to like water it down a little bit more. I've got a little bit of um, water on my rag here, so it's a bit wet. I'm just going to rub it over some of this, just to kind of keep it moving. The paint will reactivate with water, so if I feel like it's a bit too heavy in some areas, I can just go in there and just smooth it out a little bit. I just want to say as well that the clay is going to dry quite differently and I'll show you that as it as it dries. Um, obviously it's a clay paint so as it dries it's going to it dries like clay. I don't know how many times I can say dries in one sentence. Um, but yeah it will have a quite an earthy texture which I think will make this look even more rustic. Um, but I have some of the plans after this so make sure you stay tuned. So the reason why I'm using this brush, in particular the Scarlet, is because it's quite thin, the bristles are quite compact, uh, which means I can get into all the corners and all the little uh, nooks and crannies um, a lot easier than a regular brush. I've got it on my face. <laughs> got a brand new mole growing there, look. <laughs> I'm so messy. It's still drying, but this is what we've got. You might be able, it's, it's actually still drying at the bottom, but what I was going to say is I've actually made it darker at the bottom than at the top um, because I always think the bottom of stuff's more likely to get a lot dirtier. Um, all I've done is repeat the process a few extra times at the bottom there, but you can hopefully see how it's drying. Um, it's not like over the top. It's just this sort of like, almost like a bit of a stain. It's what it is really. It's a, a paint wash. It's just a bit of a stain um, and it's meant to look like rustic and imperfect to get that authentic um, aged look. So yeah, but I do have more plans. I'm gonna seal it now with Terra Matte, which is a matte um, clear coat, but then I've got some extra plans after that as well. I'm just saying. This is the Terra Seal. Look at those hands. <laughs> They're workers' hands for sure. So this is the Terra Seal. Um, I'm going in there with this, another Scarlet brush. The reason why I'm using this brush again is to get into all those cracks um, and also it's synthetic and it's important to use a synthetic brush if you want a nice smooth finish because I don't want this sort of every, I don't want like brush strokes showing for the matte finish. I'm going to put a tiny little bit on my brush and just literally put on one coat all over the piece. It might make it look a little darker at first, but once it dries, it will look absolutely fine. Just to show you guys, this is the dry clear coat. So it hasn't got that, you know, like some of them have a bit of a plasticky finish and a, sh a shiny finish. That's not the case with this one. It dry, it does dry very, very matte. And you can still feel the nice wood texture underneath it. Next up is some crackle. Um, so this is really amazing stuff for creating an old weathered look. Um, what am I saying? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So it's not good to put. Um, so it's kind of a really gloopy thing, which I'll show you how to use in a sec. You tend to use two. Usually you will use two colors. You usually use a paint, crackle, paint. However, I want to use natural wood as a base this time around and I want it to look like um, there's been some white paint on it that's starting to peel and crackle off, like it's well off there and there's just some kind of left over. Um, but in order to use wood as a base, you have to put on a clear coat, uh, hence why I put on the Terra Matte. So I'm going to show you how to use this now. So you can see I've already put a little bit there to test it out. I'm just going to put I'm going to focus it mostly around the edges. Um, it's not a product that I'm actually super, super confident with, if I'm being totally honest, because I don't use it very often. That being said, I'm quite happy just to see 
and I'll see how this goes. <laughs> I guess worst case, I'll have to, um, I would have to, yeah, sand it back again if it doesn't go quite right. So I'm putting it on fairly thick, but I'm putting it on quite carefully. Um, as I say, I don't want it everywhere. I want it to kind of look like the paint has really started to peel off. So I'm, when I've finished with this first coat of crackle, what I'm going to do is then just leave it to dry uh, before I go in with my next coat of paint. I've also never used it on clear coat before, so I know it kind of works the best with chalk mineral paint out of anything else in the range. Um, but I've never used it on clear coat, especially not one of the Terra ones. So hopefully it's going to do its, you know, crackle as, it's, as you would expect it to. The crackle has now dried and you can kind of see in those glossy areas where it is. Um, and now I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing. I've actually gone for chalk mineral paint because I know that's going to work. Um, you know, I don't know everything, guys. Like, I've never... What's going on with here? Um, I, I've never tried uh, crackle before with the clear coat. So I'm not an expert in everything, but I like to try things. So I can tell you guys whether it works or not. Um, so I'm going to put some drop cloth over this now. A good scratchy brush for this because... It's going to be kind of, like I said, it's going to look kind of rustic. Um, I don't want it looking too perfect. Um, and I've got my drop cloth here. So with Crackle, it says um, only to do one stroke. Like, don't go back and forth, otherwise it can ruin the Crackle effect. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Always makes me nervous, this. Always. Because I feel like you only get one shot. <laughs> so I've got about this much paint on my brush. And I'm just going to bring it over the top like this and go into full concentration mode <laughs> I like the scratchiness because it looks like that paint's worn off so I'm just going to keep doing this where the crackle is but also just sort of work it a little bit at the bottom here as well So I'm just dry brushing this little bit off now. I might just brush it a tiny tiny, I hope I don't make it worse, tiny little bit up here like this. <laughs> like that. It's looking crazy, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I've got another patch here. So I'm just gonna do the same thing again, just gonna bring it down. It's actually gone a bit bobbly there for some reason. I'm gonna see if I can make it work. I think it's because I put too much heat on it, like I put the hair dryer on it. But I'm also just gonna bring some of it out like this. Into the main bit of the wardrobe and just soften it up a little bit. So the idea is I don't wanna completely cover up the wood but it's looking quite thick there right now. So once the crackle's done its thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna let the crackle do its thing. And then I'm gonna go in around and just fix it up a little bit, I think, is what I'm gonna do. going on right now <laughs> kind of feels a bit of a shame that I've lost the darkness down there that I really liked so yeah I am I'm gonna fix it I will fix it it's not gonna stay looking like this <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay guys, I just want to show you how some of the crackles come about. It's kind of cool. Sometimes like I just dry brushed it in areas and it's only crackled like a tiny little bit, but I do like that. Then we've got bigger bits of crackle here. I did just sand over some of it, some of these bobbles that popped up, um, especially here. And I do like the look that it's created. Um, and it's quite thick down here as well. Again, I just sanded it a little bit just because I wanted to. <laughs> so I'm now going to seal this with terra clay, not terra clay paint, with terra matte again. Um, or just any kind of flat, or a flat clear coat. It doesn't actually have to be terra. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> I'm, losing, I'm losing my words, I'm sorry. Um... <laughs> I'll get it together. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to show you that again. It's just basically what I did before. Um, but I will show it you all stage now. So here is the finished look.